Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Pasty T Retro Gaming. We are with Doom, all capitals, so you gotta go Doom when you when you say it. You have to; it's it's necessary. You're probably thinking, um, Pasty T Gaming, why is your head so small, and why is it in the middle of the bottom part of the screen? Well, you're, you'll see. You'll see in a little bit. Um, first of all, as you can see. This game is kind of crazy. Um, it's, it should be a very familiar game, especially to older gamers. Um, this kind of pioneered the whole first-person shooter genre, and it was a it was a wonderful programming feat. I mean, this game came out in '93. It's ID Software's second IP. Um, it's probably their third game because I know that there were two like Wolfenstein games back in the day, but I don't know if that counts as one or two, like if an expansion pack. But either way, um, Wolfenstein kind of put them on the map this game solidified them on the map as far as being like a uh, a wonderful like software company um, they're based out of dallas funny enough and, and QuakeCon, which is a convention that they they did yearly which you know has kind of been uh, postponed due to the current pandemic situation but uh that's actually held in in the dallas arlington area which is kind of cool because, you know, this is like a worldwide phenomenon and I'm from Texas. And so it's just like kind of neat to be like next door to such a big thing. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do single player. We're going to do new game. We're going to play Needy Be the Dead all the way through as I as I kind of talk about my experiences with this game and kind of, you know, the game in general. Um, there's a lot of history with this game. Uh, as you can see, there's four episodes. This is the ultimate doom. Uh, it was re-released on the PC. Um, in 2020 actually as you can see the graphics are pretty good but uh, so you start off as doom guy and he's aptly named in fact the uh, one of the creators of this game um, and I'm gonna get the wrong it's J uh, John Romero so, so there's John Romero and John Carmack and they are the two like they're kind of the two main guys when it comes to doom right um, so one of them, and I can't remember if it's Carmack or Romero, let me know in the comments if you know which one, you know, has come out and said, yes, the guy, the Doom guy's name is actually Doom Guy. Uh, there's no special name to it. Now, funny enough, there were a series of books that were released um, based on this universe. And in that series of books, the main protagonist was called Fly or Flynn, Flynn Peter Taggart. I think he went by Fly Taggart was kind of like his uh, nickname. And I always thought that that was actually this this dude, um, but apparently not. Um, this guy's name is just Doom Guy. So cool, whatever. Doom Guy. I mean, it makes sense. He's he's a space marine um, that has been tasked with. He's on Phobos, and it is a moon of Mars, a real 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 moon of Mars. And he has been tasked with trying to figure out like what is going on there's like a portal to another dimension that opened up demons started pouring through as you can see there's other uh space marines that have died and you know he's there to investigate like what is actually going on and yeah so that's kind of the premise of the game you're doom guy you go and kill demons and like these these guys are called imps and they throw fireballs if you you know give them a chance to and uh, the other guys are kind of like zombies or shotgun guys. There's going to be um, multiple other enemies that end up showing up in later levels. I mean, obviously, this is the very beginning, so they're kind of giving you a, a taste of what's to come. Um, there's a hidden passage over here with a shotgun. There's another hidden passage we're going to get to by going here, turning around, drops an elevator that we we got. Okay, so the controls are pretty easy. Um, you know, you move with the WASD keys, much like a first-person shooter. That you're used to um, you aim with the mouse left and right you interact with objects or si secret passages or switches with the space bar all right so i'm going to show you all now why why i put my face here all right so i'm gonna pause the game and i'm gonna go ahead and ah look at that what is that yes yes so <laughs> I thought it'd be fitting if, if instead of the Doom guy's face, it was my face in here, because that would just be funny. All right, so we're gonna end the level. At the end of each screen, you see a, you know, kind of a rank of how you did. Uh, there's your time. Uh, par is kind of what they think that you should be able to beat. And obviously, if we ran straight to the end, we could beat it in 30 seconds. Um, so these are all the different levels in the first episode. At the end of it, there's kind of a boss fight that we'll get to. Um, 
so yeah so one of the really cool things about this game is that the it, it looks like there's a y-axis i mean like we can walk up these stairs there's elevators that take us up and down but realistically there is no y-axis they just kind of do this overlay of how the um the images lay on top of each other and that kind of creates the third dimension you know because if we were talking about three dimensions are are running back and forth you know this would be the x and z planes and then the y would be up so it's just kind of neat how they programmed it and and i can't really do justice to explain exactly how they did it but um if you watch like speedrunners that play this game they're able to manipulate the fact that there is no y-axis or that it's the same y-axis regardless of where you're at to grab items early to you know kind of manipulate enemy positions and you know right on top of of different things that you're not supposed to and just stuff like that and it's it's really neat how they can exploit that programming ingenuity in order to you know break the game in a sense to get uh you know further along in in these missions than you would normally do so now we have a chain gun it's the third weapon that we have in our arsenal um, the first being the shotgun the second being the pistol and if you cycle with the mouse wheel you can go between the two uh, the shotgun's probably my favorite it's i don't know as, as a child i played this originally when it was on floppy disk for windows 95 that is that is uh when i first played this game and yes i'm showing my age probably but you know realistically like the game i don't know the game has gone through many many renditions um this this one currently came out in 2020 actually they, they re-released the game with like a an hd update and you know really cool that they did that uh, it looks great it plays great like i'm i'm super impressed that they you know are, are continuing to to capitalize on this ip because i mean this kind of solidified id software to be a a giant gaming company i mean yes they do have you know the the new doom games uh, doom eternal just came out as well and they have like a dlc for that i actually haven't played that i have doom 2016 as it's called because it just, you know, it's Doom, but it came out in 2016. I have that. I haven't played it all the way through. I should because it looks beautiful. And they have some really neat um, glory kills, as they call them, where you would, uh, you know, be able to, like, battle enemies in a different manner instead of just shooting them with a, uh, you know, a weapon. And there's some really, really cool... I've seen some speed runs of it. Um, basically, the speed run, they're able to, like, skip large areas of the game because they can do a glory kill that pushes them through a wall and i mean it's really awesome highly recommend i know i talk about speed runs a lot but i really enjoy watching speed runs um i think especially for a game that you had played a lot uh, as a child or a lot you know just in general like a speed run will definitely show like how broken that game is or how good some players are that that, that play these games professionally um you know, for example, the the video that I did yesterday, which will will show up at the end of this video, um, Solstice. There's a speed runner out there, um, PJ, as he goes by, and he he beats it in five minutes, like five minutes fifty seconds. I watched it; it is insane. Highly recommended any of you that have played Solstice to watch that because it is crazy. Like I I can't even describe how insane it is, especially by playing the game myself to know like. You know how the controls are and all that kind of stuff and just to see somebody completely destroy it in that sense so you can see they shoot uh, fireballs if you get close enough to them they'll claw you i know i'm missing the chainsaw and some other stuff but uh, realistically i don't know how to get to it so we're just gonna go to the end so yeah um doom is famous for another reason um, you could call it infamous but uh basically doom along with games like grand theft auto and uh, mortal kombat were were under strict scrutiny from parental organizations politicians for being you know extremely violent and 
the the politicians and parents argued that games like this especially doom since it's first person um you know would would cause susceptible children to enact a violence on one another because they would try to emulate what they were doing in the game and uh, without going into it too much i'm just going to say that that's complete garbage um yes i know i normally don't take a stance on certain topics but i will say that i've done extensive research on this topic in general and there are okay so you're gonna find you know some sort of uh, uh not a survey i can't think of the correct word right now but you will find evidence supporting both sides, be it that video games do in fact encourage violence in people, and then you will find evidence that says that video games do not encourage uh, violence in people. Like, and my stance is, as an individual that has played all these games throughout my life, I don't feel like they've changed me at all. I mean, yes, I can recognize that, you know, this is purely a you know, it's a, it's a video game. It's fiction. Yes, you're able to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do in real life, but that doesn't mean I want to do these things in real life. I'd be scared as hell if there was a demon outbreak and there are, you know, imps and, and whatever running around trying to kill everything. Like, I wouldn't want any part of this. Like, grabbing a shotgun running around, that would not be exciting at all. <laughs> um, either way, but that's enough on that but i will say that the esrb which is the electronic uh, rating system that's used to rate video games much like um, motion pictures and, and and music is rated to you know determine if something's a you know appropriate for whatever age um, that was created because of games like doom you know mortal kombat grand theft auto and so when you see a game that's like rated m for mature or or whatever t for teen you know this game played a, a, a part in that system being created so just a little history lesson of, of how doom is actually a uh, you know has more i guess more stake in the video game industry than just being a, a wonderful first person game i mean th think about this they didn't really touch on the graphics that much they just made it to where it was full scaled for 1080p and the, I mean, a lot of these graphics are very similar to how the game originally was. And so for 1993, this is, I mean, this is great. This was revolutionary. That's, that's for sure. Um, and I mean, it's still revolutionary considering that there are games that, you know, continue to try to mimic this style of, of, of play and, you know, I mean, there are games that constantly come out that try to bring people back to the roots of first-person shooters, such as Doom. I mean, Quake was also done by ID Software, um, and I, I may be pronouncing that wrong. Maybe it's id Software. Either way, it's spelled ID, so, <laughs> I mean, there's that. And I know I'm missing a whole bunch of dudes, but I think we're just going to go to the end, because I can't remember how to get to some of these places. Oh, there we go. Okay. I knew there was an elevator. Okay. But, uh, yeah, and I mean, Quake is a, is a giant speedrun game, as, as is Doom, but uh, I would say that Quake kind of started speedrunning. Um, if you look on, like, if you look through the history of the internet, as far as, like, how speedruns came to be, um, oh, there's a rocket launcher in here, that's cool. The rocket launcher is very powerful, and this introduces the whole idea of splash damage. And what that means is that if I were to shoot the wall with a rocket, then the explosion of the rocket would hurt me as well. And you know that's that was kind of a neat concept as far as you know in a game that you have to be wary of actually shooting yourself um, as opposed to you know just causing you know the enemy's damage. So, kind of neat. Alright. I want to know how to get in there. You hear the guys growling at me. Either way. Um, so yeah, this game definitely um, has a lot of history as far as being... Uh, just, you know, a pioneering game for the industry. A pioneering game for how the industry has adapted to... Uh, change their way of, of, you know, recommending games to different ages. So 
these shotgun guys are dangerous because uh, they're called their damage is called like tracing and you can't really see where they're shooting like with the uh, the imps you can see the imps fireball being shot and you can dodge it but the shotgun guys will basically aim towards you and they have a chance to hit you with either one or I think seven shots and so that can be extremely detrimental for people that play on higher difficulties where each of those shots could take upwards of you know 20 hit points per per hit so you know you think about seven times 20 that could be 140 hit points that they're taking off all right so I felt like we got a lot of secrets but it's still I don't know whatever so as I had mentioned I played this game originally uh, when it was floppy disks for the computer um, if y'all want to look up some really funny commercials, you could look at uh, Windows 95 had a big campaign with Doom to kind of showcase how Windows was a gaming platform. And that was kind of one of the things that pushed them above other IO or iOSs, other OSs or operating systems, because they were able to show that they had this, this video game that was able to play on their system. And that kind of propelled them you know, ahead of other people. So we have to, yeah, we have to be fast on that because it doesn't go back down to get this uh, super super sphere supercharger whatever they call it. Um, so as you can see, my screen's a little green because I have a radiation protective suit on, and all the little green areas that uh, normally would hurt you, this protects you against that, and it does go away. Uh, there are several power-ups that have a limited duration. Uh, one of them is this. There's another one that is a... Um, wow, I can't even think right now. It, it's it's like a infrared goggles or something. It, it makes it... or night vision goggles that all the dark areas are lit up. Alright, so there's going to be enemies in here. So Doom 2, I'm going to touch on that too, because even though it is kind of like an expansion pack of this game, it's definitely worth mentioning. Um, it has a whole slew of new enemies, new weapons. Um, they, they definitely improved on the whole aspect of... Okay, how do you even get out of here? <laughs> there we go. I mean, they, they definitely in, increased the amount of detail that was given to each level. So, I mean, like, this music is, is even reminiscent of, you know, back in the day, like... Uh, there's actually one track that has been kind of thought of as they, they stole it from, like, heavy metal bands. Um, which is funny, because... They were, they were probably influenced by those bands since they created music during that time, but... Alright, so I don't think there's anything up here except for that. I think there might be a... I don't think that might be it. We can check the map. Um, some, some areas will have where you can find a map and it'll show like everything in the area. And so that's kind of a way of you to... Uh, be able to, um, you know, make sure that you didn't miss anything. Oh, is that just for that? Alright. So yeah, uh, this game is $5 right now on Steam. I don't know if that's the, the price that it always is, but you can pick this up, you can pick up um, the Doom 2, and in fact, there's another game that I'm going to be playing, which is... Uh, Doom 64, and Doom 64 is kind of like the spiritual successor to Doom 2. There is a Doom 3 that came out afterwards. Um, a lot of people pan that as not being a the, the actual third iteration of Doom that Doom 64 is. So we'll, we'll touch on that. I don't actually have Doom 3. I haven't played it. Um, I played like a really, I would say, bad version of... Uh, oh, shoot. That guy's a pinky. Oh, I'm getting messed up. <laughs> so as you can see the uh, they can mess you up if they if they group up on you but either way so I definitely want to play Doom 64 um, whether it be for myself I'll probably play it for the channel in fact I'm thinking about doing a a 
a video for each of the different episodes of this game. So like this video will be Knee Deep in the Dead, which is the first episode, and then we'll go back and do the rest of them, you know, in order, just to kind of show off the full game, because this is a fast game to kind of get through, but it's also a pretty involved game. As you can see, like, look at this map, like, that's kind of crazy. And it auto generates as you go through it, so it's kind of like I'm writing the map. Either way, okay, so we got the yellow key card, that's good. That's what we needed. Oh. That guy messed me up a little bit. I believe the exit is yeah, right through there. That is good. <clears throat> oh, we actually got a decent number of secrets. Alright. So either way, so played this floppy disk on my parents' computer. Um, this was actually, I don't know, I, you know, I might be lying to say this was the first multiplayer game for, uh, no, that's not true. There were multiplayer games. In fact, there's a series that was on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on there, but it's called High Score, and it's kind of a history of video games and kind of the, the different games and the different people that revolutionized the, uh, you know, games in general the industry and they talk about doom being one of the first you know completely interactive multiplayer games that you could play over a modem and other games that you could do multiplayer over a modem would be things like um <clears throat> you know chess or something to where it's like you know you you play your turn you have to wait for the other person to play their turn and you know so those were really easy to kind of update but this was fluid. You would actually play with other people that would be running around the levels with you, and it would be real time. And so that's what kind of made that was another thing that made this game, you know, a pioneer of its of its era. Is that that this was like the first time that people could connect in a real time play situation. All right, uh, we need to go up there. Yeah, this raised. So. I mean, like, extreme kudos to them for being able to create, you know, this atmosphere and, you know, something that other games have tried to emulate. I mentioned Quake. Um, it was also by ID Software, id Software, whatever. And there are many other games out there that have tried to, you know, emulate what these games bring to, you know, players. And one of the games or, or series that I can think of that does a, a pretty good job of, of, of doing that is the Painkiller series. And that's another first person shooter that's uh, based on a lot of, you know, running around, killing enemies, trying to find keys, that kind of stuff. And um, I have a few of those games in my collection as well. And they're pretty fun. They offer a pretty unique experience. All right. I know they. So another cool thing is the enemies will fight themselves. Goodness. Get out of there. <laughs> uh, don't get on me. No. No. <laughs> so yeah, so they can trap you. I'm try to get the barrel. Okay, good. Yeah, they messed me up a little bit. That's okay. Thankfully, there's plenty of health on the ground. Um, we might we might find a super sphere later. I think there's one in this level. Come on. I think there's a secret back here. I thought there was a secret in one of these. Maybe it's either way. Um, so yeah, I would I would definitely recommend this game if you've never played it, which Realistically, I'd be kind of surprised if you recognize the game but haven't played it. Come on. Oh yeah, there's another secret in here. Find some meat. So yeah, so this has a chainsaw, which uh, you'll see what that does. It just it runs through guys. So that's going to fall back down. So there's a uh, super armor over there, which we will get. There we go. Got to wait for these pillars to go down.
All right, now we're just gonna go to the end of the level. We're gonna find it. But yeah, let me know if y'all want to see the rest of these, uh, the rest of these episodes, and, and we'll we'll run through it. Cause I mean, I enjoy this game. I was playing it a lot the other day, just to kind of like reminisce about, you know, playing the game back when I was a child, and just kind of uh, how how fun this game really is, and how difficult it can be, especially if you let the guys. You know, group up on you in a sense of not uh, not controlling the area. I do like the shotgun the best. I like the uh, the animation that they they in, in they put in for the, the cocking for each shot. I think that's really neat. I mean, for '93, this is oh shoot! Come on, buddy! Come on, buddy! Get out of the corner! Of course. There we go. Thank you. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, this part is kind of... Like, look at this. This is amazing. And then you have like the invisible guys. I mean, I'm about to die. As you can see, the tracer enemies are really, really getting me. Hardcore. Okay, good. Secret area. So we just... Oh, light amplification visor. Excuse me. That's what they call it. I mean, you can call it night vision goggles, whatever you want. I guess it doesn't have the traditional green uh, flare that night vision goggles normally have, but... All right, there's one more of those guys. Oh, that might be all of them. But yeah, it makes a makes a big difference in this area, as you can see. Now we can, you know, actually see everything. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, we got kind of messed up there for a little bit. Shoot, I thought we were gonna die. All right, <clears throat> almost done. Almost done with the uh, first campaign, first episode, if you will get through this I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get through these fast just so that we can get to the I really want to show you all the last stage because to me the last stage introduces a new enemy um, called the Baron of Hell and they're, they're pretty formidable if you don't know how to approach them they knock out a lot they they shoot fireballs uh, much like the imps um, you could actually say that they're like a bigger better version of the imps but they uh, let that collateral damage knock the guys out. But yeah, they're they're tough, and we will definitely be using the rocket launcher and doing a lot of strafing to uh, to deal with them. Right. In fact, I should probably be using the rocket launcher on these groups of enemies. So another another cool thing that this game has, I don't know if I've already mentioned this or not, but there is in in enemy fighting um, if. For example, if an imp hits one of the shotgun guys with their fireball, the shotgun guy will get mad and he'll decide, oh, well, you're an actual enemy as well, so I'm going to start fighting you. So there are ways of getting... <clears throat> excuse me. There are ways of, of, of manipulating the enemies to fight each other to kind of make your life easier um, if you want to sneak past them, because you don't have to kill all the enemies to progress through the level, as y'all have seen. Uh, basically, you just have to collect whatever keys are necessary, and then you can go... You know to the end level but we are we are obviously not going for pure speed right now so there is a run button holding shift down will uh, actually make the character run uh, doom guy and he runs really really fast and that's necessary to actually get to certain secret areas because they'll have like an elevator that'll jump um, and you'll have to get to that elevator oh. the uh, chainsaw is actually really good against those guys <clears throat> it kind of stuns them where's the yellow gate I need to find the red doors Blue door. Alright. Oh, there's a 
invisible dude. I believe those enemies are called pinkies. Um, due to their color, not their size. Alright, so we just picked up an invisible. Um, it makes us less likely to be hit by the enemies because they can't really see us. They can still see us, but it's more like how, like you see how he shot completely away from us. So that's kind of neat. I don't think this is open yet. No. Alright, so we need to find the blue, or I'm sorry, the red door. Which, oh, there we go. Get the yellow key, and we need to get the blue key. As, oh, there's the blue key. That's good. go. Alright, as you can see, there is a spot down there that we're going to want to go to, but we need to find a jacket first. Oh, we still have one equipped. Okay, good. Actually, there is one in this room that I'm going to grab. There we go. This is about to run out. So here's another secret area, which is what we needed, the super sphere. Supercharge! So now we have 200 health, 200 armor. We're doing really well as far as our defensive capabilities. Alright, so we have the blue do blue key, so we're going to go back towards the area that had all the blue doors. Um, yeah, this is just back where we were. Okay. Uh, what was over here? Oh, we already did this. I think this was just the yellow area. Yeah. There we go. Blue door. The yellow key will be in here somewhere. We'll just search around to find it. So you can see this invisible um, little deal actually lasts for a long time. Alright, so that's the beginning. Okay, there it goes. So now the enemies are going to be able to see me normally, but that's okay. Uh, they have a kind of wind-up animation as far as you know them attacking you. There's a there's a computer-generated map. So if I if I were to pause the uh, the grayed-out areas would actually be the places that I haven't set my eyes on. So that can help as far as um, show like where you need to go and. There we go, that opened up that. There's the yellow key, thank you very much. That opened up some other stuff. Um, there we go. So this area over here is now opened up. So I'm standing on some toxic waste. It's pretty hurtful, but we're, we're okay right now. Alright, so now, another supercharge, which I believe this is the only thing in this area? Okay. There we go, we're almost at the end, I believe. This is one of the longer levels. Alright. Oh, okay, I know where we're at. Oh, shoot. The guy came out of nowhere. I mean, he came out of somewhere, obviously. <laughs> okay. So we eventually need to go where that imp is. But we do not have access to it right now. So we need to actuate... Uh, maybe it's the switch. And that'll open up... Yeah, there we go. Alright, almost done with this level. Ah, get away from me! Actually, we'll use the chainsaw. This is pretty effective when it comes to. Uh, like, this would not be an effective time for it. 
But now you can see how they're inner fighting because I just got them to. Uh... There we go. Get away, get away, get away. There's a lot of these invisible pinkies. Alright, well that took a lot of my health out. Oh well. Hey, we lived. That's what matters. Alright, and we're at the end of the stage. Every end of the stage has that similar door. And that's how you know, like, you're at the end. Oh wow, we got 100% of secrets but not kills or items. Alright, one more main level and then we will be on the... Then we'll be on the final level of this mission. I'm sorry, this episode. Whatever you would like to call it. And then we'll watch the end screen because it is kind of funny. They programmed uh, text at the end of the screen or at the end of the episode to kind of, you know, jab at you for trying so hard. Yeah, just keep in mind this came this game came out in 93. Like there's that's the uh that's the true marvel is that a game of this size and there are people that create uh, mods you can there there was a level editor that that was put out um it was actually endorsed by the creators of the game and that level editor has a huge following as you could expect because I mean who wouldn't want to make their own doom levels? And a lot of those levels are extremely hard because, you know, they'll put, like, a crazy amount of enemies uh, against you, or it'll just be, like, really difficult um, terrain that you have to travel around. Because Doom Guy can run pretty fast, and people will test that, those physics to their max. Alright, so we need to go up there as they kill each other. Kill me apparently. I don't know if there's a key up here or just a rocket launcher, which is fine. We'll take a rocket launcher. We only have 45 shells, which is a lot. You gotta think, like, this guy's carrying around a lot of freaking ammunition. Alright, so we need the blue key. There we go. One more guy, Roman. No? Okay, I thought there was another one. Oh, whale. Where did that guy come from? Oh, I didn't even see that. Oops. So y'all can't see it, um, but when you when you lose health, the face of Doom Guy will change to show how he's damaged. Um, he'll go from like having a bloody nose to having like uh, blood all over his face and I can show you all that right now so let me see let me see so yeah so he's kind of got a bloody nose he looks a little concerned and eventually he gets more and more um, kind of dilapidated for lack of a better word there we go up here. All right, red key, red key, and the blue key's over there, which we can't get to right now. I think it's kind of like they're teasing us. Actually, we're gonna use the chain gun. So I don't believe they introduced the chain gun guys in Doom One. I may be wrong. I don't remember them being in Doom One, but uh, Doom Two definitely had chain gun guys, and they they can knock out a lot because you know the chain guns. The chain gun's pretty, uh, pretty powerful, and just imagine if there were like, you know, ten guys that have that same weapon pointed at you. Like, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of damage that can be unleashed, and they cause a lot of grief for people that are trying to play this game fast on harder difficulties, running through, you know, all of those areas. But. It. There might be a secret in here somewhere. I don't know. 
That is it for me. We're just looking for a key. We're looking to get out of here. All these little doors that open, like, it's just neat that, like, you know, an area that you once thought that you had cleared is now open for enemies to come get you. Like, I, I find that neat as well, that you're not necessarily safe even though you've been through an area. There we go, yellow door. Oh, that's not helpful. I need to find that red door. I mean, I could use that to jump down there. Is that what we want to do? Armor, that's nice, that's nice, that's super sphere. Now, now we're sitting pretty. There we go, red tour. Alright, blue key. Ready to go. That was a good little little trip. Alright, it's the beginning of the area level. Now we just have to remember where the uh, blue door is. <clears throat> so yeah, there's another example of a door that opens after you've gone through an area. Alright, where is the blue door? There we go. As you can tell by me shooting, um, that awakens a lot of the enemies to my presence, and then they you know, will do their, their growl to be like, oh, there's a threat. That opened up something. Oh, that was... <laughs> that was me shooting my own barrel. I don't believe any of the rest of the guys shot me. Oh well. All right, let's go to where all they came from, because uh, I believe that is where we need to be anyways. Yep, end of the level. That's it. All right. Wow, that was only 25% of the secrets. All right, so this is the final level. As you see, they're going to start us off with uh, a lot of pinkies that um, thankfully we have those barrels to destroy. Um, you have this elevator that's going to take us to a bunch of health, um, little computer map, uh, the level's not very big, um, as you can see, but there are some, some secret passages, there's one secret in this area, uh, it is right here, this little, kind of looks like it's, uh, rusted. Loading us up with a whole bunch of items. Because uh, we're about to fight a new enemy, and this new enemy is kind of difficult. So we're gonna we're gonna load up our rocket launcher. We're gonna go up these this this elevator and we're gonna walk and begin the fight. Thankfully we have this nice arena to uh, act as a a way of uh, running around, not really having to fight the dudes, but... Alright, so we kill them, it triggers the end of the level. The walls drop down, this giant star shape. Yeah, we're able to progress, and... You know, there's some items that we can get, but it really doesn't matter, because... We're about to... We're about to be at the end. Like, I don't know why they give us some of this stuff, it doesn't really make sense, but... We'll go ahead and uh, trigger the end. These stairs are going to raise, and then we're going to see what's on the other side of this very demonic looking tile. That's it. <laughs> You're met with a whole bunch of dudes. Um, 
as you can see, the, the splash damage from the rocket kind of hurt. Hey, we actually beat it under par time. We didn't get all the kills because we died, but... As this plays out, you will find out we weren't supposed to live. Um, it was meant for us to die. And by dying, we actually go into hell because that was a portal to hell. And it is telling us that the next episodes of the campaign are actually us going through hell to try to escape. So it says, continue the experience, play the Shores of Hell and its amazing sequel, Inferno. And we will be playing that on a future episode. So I hope everybody enjoyed this. This was kind of a perspective slash gameplay of the first episode, Knee Deep in the Dead. And um, I'm actually, I actually have a really good title I just thought of, of for this. So I hope everybody enjoyed this, the new camera angle, you know, kind of funny, but this is going to be my Doom Gaming camera angle. So yeah, I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this. I appreciate all the support. If you're new to the channel, please drop a uh, subscription. That would really, really help me out. And I would appreciate if you could go on this video game journey with me. For everybody that's already here, subscribe. Thank you very much. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about the game. And, um, you know, go ahead and like and, and check out the other videos. So that's going to do it for me. And again, thanks everybody for the support. And we'll see you in the next one.